What street is Paul Revere Mall located on? A. Hanover Street. B. Beacon Street. C. Boylston Street. D. Lansdowne Street. The answer is A. Hanover Street. Anthony Everett reports on this historic site and other landmarks and celebrations on and around Hanover Street. Hanover Street's Paul Revere Mall ranks among the most photographed sites in Boston. Built in 1933, the inspiration for this plaza came on a trip taken by Mayor James Michael Curley. And the idea was that Mayor of Boston had been on a visit to Spain in Seville, a walkway called the Prado, and he wanted Boston to have something like this. There would be a community gathering space, an open space that would help connect the historic sites. National Park guides are quick to point out the intent of this park is not just to celebrate our colonial past, but to remind visitors of the waves of North End immigrants who followed the English, the Irish, Portuguese, Jews, and Italians. We call it the, the gateway to freedom, and people come through here all the time to kind of celebrate that. It's always been a melting pot. That character has always been here. At the rear of this park, of course, sits America's most storied church, the Old North Church. Founded in 1722, it's Boston's oldest surviving church. When the steeple was completed in 1740, it was the highest point in Boston. And the Old North Church is still the highest point in the North End today. The Reverend Stephen Ayers has been the vicar since 1997. I would say this is probably the most recognizable steeple in the country. Uh, Paul Revere's Ride the Poem is certainly the most famous poem and the most oft-quoted poem in the country. Everybody knows one if by land, two if by sea, even if they can't quite remember which one it was that night. It was actually two lanterns illuminated from the old North Church that fateful night of April 18, 1775. It meant the British were approaching by water on their way to Concord to try to seize a cache of munitions. Even though Paul Revere was detained on his now famous ride, other messengers succeeded in warning their fellow Sons of Liberty. So over here we have um, our cocoa pods. Visitors to the Old North Church are often surprised to find all sorts of living history exhibits. One on chocolate, a sweet served as a liquid back in colonial times. And did you know there were regional versions printed of the Declaration of Independence? Here they use the original ink formula and techniques to demonstrate. We have about 17 different known editions that we have researched. Here in the Boston edition, this is done specifically by a Bostonian printer by the name of John Gill. Now John Gill is one of those founding fathers that we say that you've never heard of before, except for the fact that he and his uh, printing partner, Benjamin Eads, are going to be the two printers that run and operate the Boston Gazette, the leading revolutionary newspaper here in this area. It's always exciting to talk to people who are seeing Old North for the first time. When you're here, when you live in Boston, you kind of take a site like this for granted. But you have to realize, thanks to Longfellow's imagery, when everybody says, God bless America, this is physically the place where, at least mythologically, that happened. In more modern times, Hanover Street has come to be known for its vibrant religious feasts, this one paying homage to Saint Agrippina, a young blonde princess from Maneo, Sicily. Legend has it she was brutally tortured to death by the Emperor of Rome during the third century. She wouldn't succumb to him. She was saving herself for God. So he tortured her and put her in a dungeon, bloodied her up. He went back the next day for her and her dress was all white. There was no blood. So it spooked him. So he beheaded her, and she became a virgin martyr. It takes 11 months to prepare for this feast, which happens the first weekend every August. Viva Saint Agrippina! The St. Agrippina di Mineo Society has paraded down Hanover Street for 101 years. It's a fully volunteer organization, but one where membership is passed down from one family member to the next generation. And we're all majorly big about family, tradition, 
honor, respect, and not just you have a chairman or you have a title, all of us have the same title, devotion to our family princess. You must be at least 18 to carry St. Agrippina, but in more recent years, the society came up with a way to give the younger generation a greater role. A bunch of guys who were the core people decided on making a smaller version of the statue. It's a great thing because the kids come down very thrilled, excited, and um, they get to basically do what we do, but on a smaller version, and it makes them feel like they're grown up. It takes 20 adults to heft this 2,000 pound shrine, but as heavy as it is, members say, the thrill never gets old. When we pull her out which, and they ring the bell for the first time, we pick her up for the first time, your heart's pounding like the first time you ever carried her. And I still get that feeling, you get a little jittery, your heart's pounding, they ring the bell, you pick her up and you're like, you feel like Superman. <laughs> It's hard to explain why, even as the North End is changing, this tradition grows stronger. To these fully grown men and women, this is no fairy tale, but a spiritual calling from God. The St. Agrippina captures you as a child, and when she does, she keeps you for your life. And it's true, she's like magnetic. Once she has a hold of you, she doesn't let go. Okay, yeah. and of course the biggest feast is St. Anthony. And uh, in 1988, St. Anthony's Society was honored to be invited by the Smithsonian Institute to Washington, D.C. to participate in the American Festival of Folklore. Right, so the Smithsonian shipped the entire feast down. The bandstand, the statues, the chapel, the lights, the whole thing, and set it all up on the National Mall. So for a little while, the National Mall looked a bit like Endicott Street and the Feast of St. Anthony. Wow, what an institution. All right, Chronicles History Quiz continues next.